we are face to face with an existential crisis that the United States has never faced before. You know, we've seen these paramilitary forces in small pods as counter protesters, as organized white supremacists. And so to see them in a nebulous official role raises so many more questions. Once you have unidentified paramilitary uh, units committing violence, being threatened in cities across the country, we are at the cusp of losing everything. I'm Nate Powell, uh, I'm a cartoonist, and I'm the artist of the March Trilogy, and I'm also the creator of the essay About Face. Comics communicate ideas effectively, efficiently. The older I get, the more I feel that communicating visually is one of the most democratic applications of personal expression. Fifteen months ago, we were talking about the kind of complacency with which we were permitting a certain kind of paramilitary aesthetic culture and even style to permeate our civilian society, police forces, fashion, um, online culture and more. What's changed in the last 15 months to that story? Because one of the major themes of, of that line of thought contained within the essay has to do with mainstreaming and whittling away using apolitical consumer-based avenues of normalizing this sort of paramilitary presence. Uh, I'd say we are now seeing the steps beyond that completed normalization. So once you have unidentified paramilitary uh, units committing violence, we are kind of face to face with the natural consequences of that total normalization. We've moved through the setup into its natural execution. You have talked a bit about the relationship between our culture and all of this. Um, can you just elaborate on that a little bit more? When we talked last year, it struck me so powerfully that you indicated that every time we make a consumer choice to purchase something with one of these kind of paramilitary icons on it, we're in a way playing our own part in normalizing this culture. Is this a culture separate, separated from the rest of us, or are we really in a continuum with it? I think a lot of this has to do with looking out your window. It, it depends on what our neighborhood looks like, what our community looks like. Um, even if, if the, these sort of aesthetic choices and shifts in style are something that, um, you know, something that rubs us the wrong way as individuals, um, we are still a part of it in the fact that, you know, you can see uh, people taking up road space with you, people counter protesting at the protest you show up for. We see, uh, and, and really, you know, we see people who are not necessarily malevolent, but just, you know, neighbors and other people within the community are all playing a role in normalizing a lot of what we're seeing come to fruition now, which is finding a projected persona uh, you know, that helps shape our sense of identity um, that, uh, that is largely guided by this sense of uh, covering up insecurity, by trying to find a certain kind of American masculinity, but also just like really coming out on the other side uh, of, of the way that cool stuff looks cool, the way that the bad guy, the way that, the way that anti-heroes uh, you know, are, are pushed as, uh, as fundamental heroes. This is not to cast specific blame to anyone about this, but yes, we all play a role because these are strong signifiers of shifts in our politics and society. We often ask people on our show, you know, what do you think is the story the future will tell of this moment? Um, and it has become an ever more important question in this period where it feels we could go in two such distinct directions. Um, what's your sense of where we're headed? It is my hope that, you know, people from the far left to the, the center right are going to be able to, to put aside every petty difference, 
every hair splitting and understand that we are at the cusp of losing everything. So it is my hope that we will look back to understand that this is a real, a, a real moment of unity in a way that we haven't seen in a long time because it's an existential crisis that, that the United States has never faced before. We have no option but to prevail as a democracy, as a society.